Hi, and welcome to the first session in our series called The World Is Not Enough. We're looking at this book of John, and I, I got to tell you, it is so fantastic to be able to read John and his perspective on why we need salvation. See, John is one of the four Gospels uh, that account the life of and ministry of Jesus Christ. But John tackles it using epic imagery. Um, can I read for you how John starts even? John chapter 1 verse 1 says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything that was made. In him was life, the life that was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't overcome it. You see how John begins? When he uses in the beginning, it is supposed to remind the readers of the first words of the Bible in Genesis, when it talks about in the beginning. John is wanting to introduce us to Jesus not just as a mere man who walked on this planet. He's not trying to introduce us to Jesus as something else that you'd see in the world around you. He's out of this world. He is the creator of this world. Everything that was made was made through Him. He was that Word. Uh, he's described as the light. Now, as we do this series, um, it's really a look at salvation. And today we're going to look at two contrasting people that Jesus encounters in the beginning of the book of John. Now, we're going to go fairly quickly through John. So I'm just going to highlight key stories that are in there. But there are so many. So I want to encourage you to read the book of John. 21 chapters, it's not really that hard. But let's go into John chapter 3, where we meet the first of... Um, several people, I think, seeking salvation. Uh, maybe it uh, has something um, that might resonate with you. John chapter 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do signs that you do unless God is with him. A couple of things about Nicodemus is, well, he is a Pharisee, um, one of the ruling class of the Pharisees. That means he's made it to the top of the world that he knows. He's very religious, he can quote scripture, he's probably ordered his life around the rules um, of his religion. But he's coming to Jesus in the night. That means he's not wanting to be seen. He's a little bit embarrassed, but he's really seeking for the truth. We know of Nicodemus in the future that he actually ends up having a long-term relationship with Jesus. So this is kind of the beginning of his journey. Jesus answered him in verse 3. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Because Nicodemus is old. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. When, when he says flesh, just think of the world, I guess. Um, do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now, Nicodemus is not a foolish person. In fact, he's highly educated. So he's not saying to Jesus, oh Jesus, are you saying that I must crawl into my actual mother's womb and like be born again? It's a metaphor. He's saying, do you want me to start all of my life again? How absurd is that? Jesus, don't you understand? I'm old. 
I've lived my life. I have made it up to the top of my class. But you want me to like do something as ridiculous as go right back to the beginning? And Jesus says, yes, I want you to go back to the beginning. But not the beginning of the world as we know it, but the beginning of my kingdom. Beginning of a life with Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to challenge you as we go through today's devotionals and this home group that at whatever stage you are in your Christian walk, maybe you are a Christian leader, maybe you're a home group uh, participant for, for years or you worship lead, wherever you are, um, don't take this position of Nicodemus where you go, I've made it in my Christian circles and I, I know it all. Because Jesus might want to say to you, Maybe it's time to begin again. Maybe the foundation that, because for Nicodemus, Jesus knew this. His foundation was not on Christ. It was built on all of these rules and all these other things. Um, and I've certainly, as I've been growing up, have discovered and met many Christians. I've at many times found myself in that position where instead of relying on Jesus, I've relied on just religion and status as, as I've grown up. Now, there's another story in chapter 4, which is the kind of direct opposite or contrast to that. And so let's read John chapter 4. Um, Jesus now meets a Samaritan woman at the well. And it says this, Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize but only his disciples, um, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. He had to pass through Samaria. Now, Samaria is directly on the way to Galilee, and most Jews would have avoided it. But Jesus, he's not a respecter of persons. He came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, he was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. Verse 7. A woman from Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For the disciples had gone away to the city to buy food. And the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. You have to understand that Jesus was now um, breaking away from sort of religious custom. And he was going to somebody who was thought of as unclean. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who is saying it to you, give me a drink. Then you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And the woman said to him, Sir, uh, you have got nothing to draw water with. And the well is deep. She's still thinking he's talking about water. Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us this well and drank from it himself as did his sons and his livestock. But Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I give him will be in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty and not have to come here to draw water. Then comes this most amazing interaction because Jesus also sees through this woman, also sees that she needs Jesus. Just like Nicodemus needs Jesus, she does too. He said to her, go and call your husband and come here. And the woman answered him, she could have lied, but she told the truth. I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you're right in saying you have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and now the one that you're with is not your husband. What you have said is true. And the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Um, our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say it is in Jerusalem, the place of where people should worship. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. And Jesus is now explaining how salvation is for all, but only those who are genuine, who are true. You worship what you do not know, and we worship what you know, for the salvation is from the Jews. But, he says in 23, the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit 
and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And the woman said to Him, I know that the Messiah is coming, He who is called the Christ. So she's heard about the prophecy of Jesus and a Savior that is to come. When He comes, He will tell us all things. And verse 26 nails it. Jesus says, Jesus said to her, I who you speak to am He. Jesus makes it very clear. He is the source of salvation. Um, as we go into today's discussion, I want you to balance up these two interactions with Jesus. One of a religious person who supposedly has everything going well, but doesn't really rely on Jesus. It needs to begin again. And a person who seemingly doesn't know much about Jesus. Um, yet Jesus offers both of them the same offer of salvation. You see, in our church, you can't really tell who is saved. Only God can tell who has been saved in spirit and in truth. And I hope over this series that we will look at that. Are you really saved?